The motorsports world is where legends are made, the unthinkable happens, and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with Jim Beaver. Welcome to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Locked and loaded, I'm back. I can't say from a vacation, but from a, a lot of time on the road to the show. And uh, thank you guys for bearing with us. Uh, we, we got some fun guests today. This one's a kind of a catch-up episode. Um, but we've got my good friend with Fistful of Bourbon, Fistful of Terry. He's on the show this week. We've also got uh, another good friend of mine is from Supercross, Sean Brennan, on the show. He's going to dissect everything that's happened in Supercross and lead us into uh, what's going to go down in Atlanta. And then in addition to that, I got my good friend Chris Leone. Chris and I, we're going to dissect everything that's happening in the world of motorsports. So yes, catch up today, catch up day today on the show uh, we're going to bring you up to speed on everything happening in the world of racing. So, uh, yeah, lots of fun guests. I myself have uh, definitely been on the road. I've been a dirtfish. I've been in Texas. I've been in Tennessee. Uh, I've been all over the place. And uh, we're going to tell you about my travels, my adventures, and a whole lot more here on the show. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. We are motorsports, you know, as well as a whole hell of a lot else. Um, we are going to... Uh, yeah, just uh, talk all things horsepower and racing and uh, everything in between. Uh, if you are listening on Sirius XM, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, U.S. American Forces Network, big shout out to our troops overseas doing what you do. Uh, we wouldn't be here doing radio without you. Thank you guys. Um, you know, Sports Byline, 200 Networks, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast One, wherever you're at. Thank you guys. Head over to Apple Podcasts, smash the subscribe button, support us there. And I am Jim Beaver 15 at Jim Beaver 15, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you got guest suggestions, you want to hit us up, let us know what's going on. Uh, yeah, hit us up over there and uh, let me know. And uh, if you, I know you're a listener to the show, chances are I'm probably going to give you a follow back as well. But uh, yes, thank you guys for being here. It's going to be a fun show today. Uh, I got plenty of segments to answer questions, so definitely hit me up with those questions if you got any fan Q and A's. And uh, I know, man, lots of extremey. Extremey's going on as we speak right now, and I can't wait to dive in, talk about that, talk about some Formula One. And whoa, man, we got Bristol, we got Dirt Track, we got that to talk about. Uh, man, lots happening off road. We are locked, we are loaded, we got a whole hell of a lot more right here this week on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Don't go anywhere, a whole lot more to come. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side -side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. From the 2018 Master Distillers of the Year comes a bold new American whiskey in Fistful of Bourbon. 
Their whiskeys have been award-winning for generations. Now they're going all in on bourbon, blending five straight whiskeys to create a big balanced bourbon that stands apart from everything else. So grab yourself a fistful of bourbon, a blend of five bourbons created with over a hundred years of whiskey blending experience. It ain't just a bourbon, it's a damn fistful. Please enjoy responsibly. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Boy, does it feel damn good to be back in the saddle here in the show. Been having some project actions go on, but this is the first Down and Dirty Radio Show in a couple of weeks, and I am damn excited to be here. Damn excited to tell you about what I have been up to, and uh, it has been fun. First off, I was in Texas. Yes, Texas. I got to hang out with my good friend Steve Torrance. You know that guy that's won uh, all kinds of uh, NHRA championships and got uh, Wally's to spare? Yeah, Steve Torrance was down with him in Texas. Got to check out the family ranch. What a great time. Eat some of the some great, great barbecue. Yeah, one of these barbecue restaurants he took me was actually uh, uh, a place there in Kilgore. And um, it was actually so freaking awesome. They serve you your beer in this big ass goblet, and uh, it was the barbecue was so good when uh, George W. and uh, his dad, the original George Bush, were in the White House. They would actually fly in barbecue from this restaurant in Texas to the White House so they could eat it. Man, I'm telling you, it is that good. Uh, and then I went to Supercross. First time I've been in Supercross in a long time. It's a Super Tuesday round. And I purposely wanted to go to Super Tuesday around to see how Supercross was doing things. And I got to tell you, man, uh, Supercross, they got their ducks in a row. I mean, Dallas was amazing. You know, first time I'd actually been to uh, to to the new, I guess, Cowboy Stadium. Uh, but, uh, you know, the place is just beautiful. But I got to tell you, man, Supercross, they've got all the fanfare. You know, they've got all of uh, the racing you to expect. I don't know how in the pandemic they have pulled off what they did, but I got to tip the cap to Supercross because I, I got to tell you, they have done a phenomenal, I mean, phenomenal job of delivering the fan experience you expect from Supercross in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, you know, I was there. Obviously, there was less people than normal, but I, I got this full Supercross experience. If you've been there before, you've never been there. Man, let me tell you, it is worth it. Get your tickets. I know they got some rounds in Atlanta, some in uh, Utah, Salt Lake City. Get your tickets. Get locked in. Get loaded. Go to Supercross between now and the end of the year if it's in your area because you are not going to be disappointed. It is a great time. It is a great show. And, uh, man, Supercross has got it figured out. When everybody else is running scared, fanless, Supercross, yeah, they got you covered. So a good times there. I was actually able to fly out to Bristol, and I got to tell you, we're supposed to take in some racing at the uh, dirt track. Got rained out. Spent a couple of days in Bristol, and uh, man, it was a solid, solid time. First time I'd actually ever been to Tennessee. I absolutely loved it. Uh, really fun. Uh, a ton, uh, a ton going on. Um, yeah, Bristol. What a rad town. Downtown Bristol. Count me in any time of the week, uh, any time of the year. Uh, those people know how to party. They know how to have a good time and just a beautiful, beautiful area. And then uh, last weekend, I was up at Dirtfish in Seattle. I'm heading there again this next week. So back-to-back Dirtfish trips for me, I cannot complain in that regard. But, uh, yes, Dirtfish I was up there. My good friend Street Bike Tommy, uh, he invited me up there with uh, country music singer Tim Montana. And I got to tell you, Tim, I was actually pretty impressed for a country singer. I didn't think he'd have much skills behind the wheel. Boy can drive. He uh, he absolutely impressed. Uh, but what impressed even more, I've never seen somebody carry around their guitar, sit down, and literally start riffing like he does. Just singing songs, shooting from the hip. Uh, Tim Montana, good dude. We're going to have him on the show here in the coming weeks. But, uh, yeah, let me tell you, Tim knows how to have a good time. And uh, I, I actually got to uh, – I'm, I'm an Eminem fan. I think uh, probably if you're listening to the show, you're probably an Eminem fan, right? Um, you know, he's got his song 8 Mile, right? 
Uh, the song from the Eight Mile soundtrack, one of his probably songs he's most known for. And uh, Tim pulls out the guitar, does like a rock country version of that Eight Mile song. Absolutely insane. I'm like, whoa, what a cover was, you know, that was. So um, I had an amazing time up there. Uh, I really, really am just uh, uh, really blessed to be able to do what I do and have these experiences, get to check out uh, Seattle area some more and do some more exploring. Uh, first time in a long time I'd been able to actually do that. I had probably one of the most amazing shrimp cocktails I ever had had in the Pike Market. Uh, big old fat shrimps caught that day. This cocktail sauce that uh, was uh, that definitely had some horseradish in it. It was, uh, I don't know, what an experience. I can't complain. The last couple of weeks have been rock solid on my end. And uh, here we are going back to Dirtfish this next week uh, for some more fun and rally cars and uh, hanging out with some good friends. And I, I can't wait to do that. So uh, we, we got a lot, uh, lot coming at you today on the show, the next coming weeks. Uh, you know, it's it's been a hell of a lot of fun. I can't wait to talk some Extreme E. I, I'm, like, biting my tongue right now because I so want to talk about it, but I promise I can't do it until Chris Leone is on the show because, uh, yeah, it's going to be so much better when we can talk about that together. The one thing I will say, Kyle LaDuke Duke had a big off today. Looks like Ganassi Racing is going to be able to get the car back together. They are going to be back in the race, which is uh, which is definitely uh, a good thing for all of you uh, American Ganassi fans and Sarah Price and Kyle Duke fans. Looks like there was a split lane. He clipped a rock, kind of tore a corner off the car, but uh, spun it around. But the uh, car never went over, which is uh, amazing. Kyle's in great shape. Car's going to get back together. Team America going to be back on the grid at Extreme E, which uh, is definitely awesome for um, you know, for the first race of the year, uh, definitely don't want to, you know, have something like that take you out. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of good stuff coming out of Extreme E. World of Off Road, man. We got what San Felipe 250 coming up. We got Moab happening right now. I got a lot of friends in Moab. Uh, we got Ultra Four happening this weekend up there too at uh, what area BFE. Uh, but it, it looks like Easter Jeep Safari did go off. Massive crowds. Stoked to see that uh, one of the biggest Jeep events of the year actually happened there in Moab. Um, and Jeep, Bronco, uh, there's a lot uh, lot on display, a lot to take in up there. Uh, hopefully some of you are listening in from Moab, uh, you know, being up there. But, uh, yeah, definitely Easter weekend. Maybe some of you left early, got families uh, need to get home to or, or something like that. But uh, Easter Jeep Safari, you know, last year got scrapped. This year they did it. And it uh, sounds like they did it in a big way. And uh, hopefully by next year, everything's 100% back to normal up there with uh, uh, with uh, Easter Jeep Safari. So, uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of good stuff happening. Uh, I love that uh, things are getting back together. We've got NHRA going to get back uh, going here. And uh, I know Antron Brown will be one of our guests next week. In addition uh, to NHRA, we've got IndyCar and that uh, season kickoff coming very, very soon. And I can't wait to talk about that as well maybe uh, next week need to get an indycar driver on here start talking about the uh, upcoming race but uh speaking of some things before we go to uh, this commercial break uh you know the flowers are blooming the grass is growing and it's time to chop the weeds well thanks to our sponsor manscaped you can trim your holes safely and efficiently i'm talking about ball trimmers yes manscaped the global leaders in men's below the waist grooming i have an exclusive offer for our audience Use code Jim Beaver, and it's going to get you 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped. Yes, manscaped.com is the website. Join the other 2 million men who trust Manscaped. They're here to make sure you are trimmed and smelling nice. After all, it's time for some spring cleaning. And spring has sprung, and Manscaped has the best tools to get you ready. Manscaped's the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming. They have forever changed the grooming game with their amazing products. Have you heard of the Weed Whacker? The nose and ear hair trimmer that provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, tugs in those delicate holes. No more gross nose hairs flying in the wind. The premium Manscaped Weed Whacker uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered by a 360-degree rotary blade system. Manscaped is making whacking your weeds a time uh, to look forward to delivering maximum confidence while providing hygiene. Speaking of hygiene, Manscaped has all kinds of formulations to keep you fresh and ready for everything that comes your way. 
way. And uh, speaking of smelling fresh, check out uh, the refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped. This is stuff that is legit, and it will have you smelling like royalty. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor. Always use the right tools for the job. 20% off plus free shipping using the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. It's spring cleaning and uh, your balls will thank you. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm going to shift gears right now. We're going to jump into things with uh, my good friend, Mr. Chris Leone. Uh, Chris, it's been, uh, been a minute since we've had you on the show uh, I don't even know why. There's no excuses for that. Just uh, <laughs> I've been busy. You've been busy. And uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's just about the way to sum things up. But uh, I know we were, we're priming the pump. We're going to start our power rankings again next week. So next week, power rankings will be coming back. But, but I figured, uh, you know, we got so much to talk about, so much to dissect. Before we start our power rankings up for this year, we probably should just jump in and talk about all these crazy storylines we've got going on. I mean, Supercross and a little bit of a break in between uh, some triple header rounds. We've got, uh, obviously, Extreme E. I want to jump in and talk about that today. That's going on there in Saudi. Um, we've had Formula One happen. We're, uh, you know, right before IndyCar starts. I mean, we're a few weeks out from IndyCar. Um, NHRA is coming back. I mean, shoot, what else? We Oh, yeah, yes, we had Bristol. We had NASCARs on the dirt for the first time in, what, like 50 years? Uh, something crazy like that. So, I mean, what, early 70s, I think, was the last time NASCAR was on uh, on dirt. So, I mean, we, we got a lot to dissect here, Chris. I mean, uh, you know, not only that, but uh, you've been uh, obviously uh, just cranking away on the iRacing side. And I know our eSports program's uh, firing on all cylinders. eNASCAR's in full swing, man. You've, uh, you've had your hands uh, pretty full lately. Dude, I feel like I'm going to need smelling salts to get through it just because of the absolute overwhelming bevy of events that we've been watching or covering or taking part in whether it's real world virtual world whatever i'm <laughs> man it, it's everything's coming back i mean let's i'll put it this way it's a hell of a lot better place than we were a year ago today in terms of real world motorsport but uh man when it rains it pours yeah it does when it rains it pours I guess that would be a nice segue into uh, Bristol because uh, it rained and poured <laughs> at Bristol. Somehow they still were managed to, to be able to race 24 hours later. And the funny part is <laughs> it got dusty. <laughs> so the rain really didn't affect much at all. Um, I don't know, Chris, let's talk about that. I watched almost the entire race. I mean, there was, there was some bits where I got pulled away. I had to crank it on the TV here in the office, kind of on mute most of the day and just was watching. But I was uh, – I will say I was optimistic. I was hoping this just wasn't uh, a novelty, you know, but it, Chris, I became a fan. I know you and I had talked and I said, I don't know that it needs to be a points race. I could see this as being like an all-star race, you know, and take place of that. But I, let's just say I actually want to see NASCARs on dirt again. And I guess anytime I want to see them do something again in some way, shape, or form, that means it, it was a success because, you know, if it's, you know, horse crap, I'm going to be the first to call it horse crap. 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was certainly interesting. I mean, there was kind of a double edged sword for the, I guess, kind of a lack of testing on this. Um, you know, and, and it, it works out in good ways and bad ways. The good ways is that all of these teams who are used to doing things down to the thousandth of an inch or whatever are back to the old school realm of spitballing and guessing and checking and having that development process out in front of the world for everybody to see, which is not something that people really seem to like anymore. And that was great. On the other hand, it meant that some of the things we take for granted in terms of race control procedures were not really fleshed out beforehand the way that you would hope that they would be i mean things that we take for granted like getting cars and debris off the track and you know red flags versus yellow flags things of that nature seem to be the kinds of things that we're also getting learned on the fly and that's never something that you totally want either so you know it, it again double-edged sword um you know i i really i would like to see it again as well I don't know if Bristol is the place where I want to see it again, even though that's what we're getting as they've already announced for 2022. I don't know if, I don't know if maybe a permanent dirt track, a place like Knoxville where NASCAR has now shifted the trucks to uh, a place like Eldora, which has wanted it. Uh, Tony Stewart has wanted it. And obviously, excuse me, Tony Stewart uh, being, you know, kind of our dirt track Sherpa here in America, the person who really leads us to some of the best dirt track racing. You know, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, it, it can definitely get better and I'm optimistic that it is going to get better. Um, but there were, there were some things that happened over the course of the weekend that, you know, again, on any other race weekend, you just kind of take for granted about how, how easily you're able to do those things. I mean, we had all these heat races planned out for Saturday and we turned a grand total of one lap with the trucks. Um, and so that wasn't, uh, obvi obviously that's not what anybody wanted to see. Um, I will give NASCAR all the credit in the world for calling it as early as possible on Sunday and saying, you know what, we're not going to try to force this. We're going to reset and do it the right way on Monday. Um, I know in other events and on other, you know, and on the typical paved surface, usually they'll do everything they can to get it in on the day it was scheduled, no matter how late it is. But, um, you know, it was interesting. I Again, I really liked the fact that teams were having to figure this out on the fly, and the people who adapted the best and adapted the most quickly and had the closest guesses to what they needed to be were the ones who took advantage of it. I mean, we almost had a Daniel Suarez victory you know, theoretically speaking, they did a great job. Yeah, Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin ended up being a little better down the stretch run, but even then, you know, Denny kind of gave it away, gave that opportunity away in the last restart. So we saw a field that really got shaken up. We saw driver skill get rewarded. I mean, it was it was everything you want from a top tier major professional motorsports event in that regard. So, you know, it, regardless of the surface or the track or whatever as long as we can get more of that i think that's the most important thing i do think dirt is going to facilitate that very well um i just uh i i i just hope that once we get around to this next year that uh people are really able to take advantage of some of the key learnings that i think we got out of this time around yeah you know and I, one of my favorite parts of this is and I, I've never really said this publicly, but dirt late models are the ugliest freaking cars on the planet. <laughs> they, I, I'm, and I'm probably going to get assassinated for saying that. They're ugly. There's not one thing sexy about a dirt late model. Now, pull the skins off and they're damn sexy. Those things haul ass. Like, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I appreciate the tech and I appreciate the speed. They're ugly freaking race cars. I mean, that's just all there is to it. There's nothing sexy about a dirt late model. The NASCARs on dirt, that was sexy. Those are good-looking cars. So in regards to that, I loved the look of NASCARs on the dirt. I, I really love the look of the trucks on the dirt, and we've seen that before at Eldora. Um, the funny thing was is, like, you, you know, and obviously with dirt late models, you know, they, they don't have windshields, things like that. You know, seeing the guys have to have their rag in there and wiping the windshield and things like that, I, 
you know, I, I think they're – and I was actually looking at the speeds around Bristol, and we're not talking really fast speeds, especially on the dirt for the cup cars. Um, I, I think they were breaking maybe 100 miles an hour possibly at times, but it wasn't like it was wicked quick. We were more in the 75 to 90 mile an hour range, I think, most of the time. Um, I could conceivably see at some point popping the windshield out of these things and going, uh, going, going without a windshield. I think it would solve a lot of problems. I think it would probably kill the look of the cars. Um, but I, I don't know. There, there's a lot, like you said, there's a lot before next year. I guess part of me is excited about the second year because I'm sure it's going to be infinitely better. Um, and, and, you know, I, I guess the biggest comparison here, Chris, and, and I know you have been very vocal after year one, but would be the Roval because the Roval was a complete mess the first year. But the second time they ran the Roval, it got infinitely more interesting and it was actually better racing. And so I, I kind of look at that and go, I mean, Bristol after year one was infinitely better position now than uh, I would say the Roval was after year one. But I think year two, it, it might be really good because if we've seen how they adapted at the Roval and things got better, I think this dirt track could definitely be way better in year number two. And year one wasn't bad. Yeah, see, uh, although that's the thing. Does that push us too much into the realm of everything is – everything is figured out to the point where it gets uninteresting again. I think that's where, I think that's where the lack of testing helped the product and the lack of experience helped the product, you know, with the Charlotte Roval, I think the lack of driver experience on that track made the product actively worse because there were, you know, drivers at the top tier making mistakes and making on track driving decisions that were just, you know, uh, inexplicable to some extent. I get that it's the playoffs and that does a little bit of it. I mean, Bristol felt like a lot of guys getting back to their roots and getting back to the, um, you know, well, we're going to throw a bunch of things at the wall and whatever sticks we're going to go with. Um, So I I think it's one of those things where it depends on the situation that you're in. Um, You know, I, I, I think with dirt racing, the less again as long as we get those race control procedures figured out and as long as we get those couple of deals sorted where i think the less experienced drivers have and teams have getting ready for that the better um but you know at at the same time yeah if they pop the windshields out i know there's a lot of things you'll have to figure out you know you'll have to figure out okay how do we protect the digital dash and you know how many tear offs are we going to have to put on these guys for 250 laps? Uh, because you know it's going to be a double digit count, but is it going to be closer to 10 or is it going to be closer to 20? I mean, uh, you know, it'll be it'll be really interesting to sort of see how that plays out in the future. Again, I think this is I think they've kind of got it figured out. I'm still a little I'm still a little eh on the fact that we've got you know, major prominent facilities that with the second race are just having to reinvent themselves rather than us kind of spreading the wealth of top tier racing when there are so many great racetracks in America that have the capability of doing the same thing with fewer problems. That was my biggest critique of the Charlotte Roval was we have so many road courses, you know, find another yeah, road course. Why? And <laughs> why? Be, I think that be, was the thing. And be careful what you, yeah, be careful what you wish for if you're not a road course guy, because we have, what, six of them this year, I think? Yeah, um, which I'm, you know, but, I love, but. but nonetheless, yeah. I, I, I'm with you. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's the same idea, you know. We have a ton of great dirt tracks here in America, and I get it. They don't seat 160,000 like Bristol does, but. Of all years to not try to fill um, gigantic grandstands, wouldn't this probably still be the one? Yeah, yeah, I uh, completely (laughs) agree with you. We are up against a break. We will be back with more with Chris uh, when we return here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. 
If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Chris Leone here. We were just dissecting Bristol, the dirt track, everything that went down there at uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. I know uh, kind of closing out, Chris, we, we got to talk some Extreme E. We got some Formula One to talk about, some other stuff. I think probably, you know, we were talking about, you know, a lot of people not knowing what to expect, and that kind of made for the good driving. I think it was uh, – Probably, truthfully, one of my fav- most impressed, impressive racers to me on this entire thing was uh, Suarez. He actually led some laps at one time. I think they did an interview with him at one point in between one of the uh, um, one of the stages, and they said, "What are you doing out there? How <laughs> you running up front?" And he, he looks at the camera, dead straight in the camera. He goes, "I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing." <laughs> <laughs> really and it was it, awesome to see him have a good run that team is coming on strong they could surprise and uh you know and and funnily enough you've got the connection to that team as well in that your old enos car driver eric smith is actually an engineer on that yeah. team so kind of a fun little you may have to call eric maybe you can get daniel on the sw- on the uh show at some point because yeah. he seems like he'd be a good interview he did tv earlier this year he did a great job with yeah it. he's definitely an entertaining guy and i i like that you know what I mean? and it's funny i think it was jeff gordon piped in and goes you know he goes it's probably truth in that he doesn't have any bad habits to break and uh, mm-hmm. i go well that's actually probably there's a lot of truth in that. that's probably one of my favorite bits of the whole thing but i was i was thoroughly impressed with him um at there you know and he's just uh yeah, it, it was a good time. But shifting gears, I guess, keeping with the dirt, Chris, we're in Saudi Arabia right now. As we are recording this for Extreme E, I know Team America, Chip Ganassi Racing, and I know we've got Andretti Autosport. Uh, you know, they're running a team, but, uh, you know, they they don't have two American drivers, so I'm just dubbing Ganassi Team America for uh, for the sake of things. Uh, Kyle Duke <laughs> having an off in, uh, I think it was like a first practice or shakedown or something like that. 
Uh, Carr looked pretty mangled, but Ganassi said, no problem. We've got this handled. Uh, they're going to be back out on track. But uh, I don't know, Chris. They've changed up the format of the race. They, I know you just did a preview for us on social media over at the Down and Dirty Show's uh, Instagram. Um, but it's I'm excited, man. This is something – Truthfully, I think a lot of people a couple years ago when this was announced thought it was a pipe dream. I think there was a lot of people that never thought this series would see the light of day. I've been fortunate. I've worked very close with Extreme E on a few different projects now. I got to tell you, they have their ducks in a row. They know what's going on. Um, Their PR team is always on point. They're always delivering information. Um, The series, I'm absolutely just... Chris, they've got it figured out. I'm hoping this goes well. Um, you know, obviously Team America didn't go so well in the shakedown. We'll see what happens in qualifying. But, uh, man, Chris, I, I'm very, very optimistic about this entire Extreme E format. I am with you. I mean, admittedly, I, I was kind of – I was on the fence when this first got announced a couple of years ago because I said, on the one hand, this seems like the most unrealistic racing series pitch that I've ever heard. On the other hand – this is, you know, this is the brain trust that also put together Formula E and look at what people have said about Formula E and yet look at where Formula E races and look at how many factory programs it has behind it, you know. So I've always kind of leaned towards the these are the right people to figure it out. And um, from what I've seen so far, I'm excited to I'm excited to say that I think they've pretty much gotten it right. Yeah, you're you know, changing the format a little bit before the first race because you haven't had much of an opportunity to shake things down. Admittedly, a little bit of a disappointment just because we get a little less wheel-to-wheel racing and everybody loves wheel-to-wheel racing. But at the same time, Extreme E takes its inspiration really from kind of a shorter version of the Dakar Rally. I mean, almost like old old short course racing when a short course event at crandon wasn't you know the current crandon international raceway when it was like the 25 mile brush run um and just taking this to all sorts of different climates all around the world i mean this is this really is kind of video game racing in i i can't really think of a better way to put it than that adventure racing as well and i know we've used that term for off-road you know desert racing here in america quite a bit but this really is adventure racing. You're hitting countries that sometimes that you don't really think of always as being racing countries. Certainly Saudi Arabia. Oh, I mean, come on, Chris. Do. Greenland. Certainly Brazil, you do. But Green, yeah, yeah, Greenland. Greenland. That's Senegal. Not even, yeah, I'm, I'm How like, much racing do you do in Senegal and Greenland? Probably yeah. not a lot. Here's probably not at this level. Here's actually, this might be a good trivia question. Has Greenland ever hosted a motorsports event of any kind of any kind a formal motorsports event of any kind i think the answer is no i mean i don't care if it's a motorcycle drag race i don't care if it's a jalopy race i don't think greenland has probably ever hosted any kind of formal race ever yeah it's a good question and be sure to respond to us on uh, the social medias <laughs> if you've got an answer for us. But uh, but no, it's – and so it's going to be really exciting and really interesting to see how these cars all adapt to all of these different climates. And certainly, if you look at the driver lineup, I mean, you know, <laughs> I can't really think of a better collection of talent being assembled anywhere, you know, in terms of diversity of backgrounds. I mean – You've got people who have run Le Mans. You've got, you know, people who have won the Dakar, won WRC, won Rallycross, won Off-Road, won, uh, I mean, you have Jensen Button, who is a Formula One world champion, driving as well as owning his own team, the way that Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton have ownership stakes. I mean, it's, this is, really, it, it feels like race of champions except around the world and for points, and people are committed to it beyond a single event weekend it, it's it's phenomenal it it feels like the kind of thing that you put together in a video game you know like an arcade style video game because you know that you'd never have the budget or the resources to do it in the real world so it's it's going to be really exciting i'm going to be glued to my tv all weekend watching it recording it i 
I mean, the next thing I'm going to do once I'm done with the interview is set in my DVR to make sure that I don't miss a second of it. I know there's only three cars at a time going wheel to wheel, um, but between the driver swaps and just, I really do think it's a great looking machine. It's, they certainly could have done a lot worse than they did with the design of the Odyssey 21. Um, I, I think it's going to put on a heck of a show. I think it's a great made for TV event. I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a lot more entertaining than the naysayers will give it credit for. That is for absolute certain. Yeah. So I'm looking up, I, I, I have go as a race ever happened in Greenland. And the top hit is a uh, Greenlandic Inuits. So I wrong race, wrong race. <laughs> We're talking about motorsports races. So I go, okay, not, not has a race ever happened. I, so I go, I just typed in motorsports in Greenland. Pat's Motorsports. I'm like, oh, Pat's Motorsports. Awesome. There's something going on. Yeah, Greenland, Michigan. Um, so, uh. <laughs> uh, and then there is actually an article from the Arctic Today. There is a newspaper called the Arctic Today, and it says Greenland will host its first ever off-road race. Yada yada. I don't think there's ever been a motorsports event of any kind in Greenland. So, yeah, there you go. I would love to be corrected. Internet, you know, solve solve this trivia problem, but. Yeah, I don't know, Chris. Um, yeah, we're we're digressing, but you're going back to what you said. I'm I'm actually really really excited. You, you want to talk about an all star cast of guys and girls, um, for that matter. I mean, but uh, you know, Sebastian Loeb, Jensen Button, Carlos Sainz. I mean, Liasons. I mean, gosh, you know, Sarah Price. You just go down. You, you know, the list of just blue chip drivers that is in this series. Man, mind blown, Chris. Like. This is like race of champions, but not race of champions. Yeah, exactly. And Katie Munnings, Molly Taylor. Yeah. I mean, the the rule that each team has to have one man and one woman behind the wheel, it, it's led to obviously a very interesting driver lineup considering that, you know, you've been you've been just as diverse in where you've pulled the women drivers in the series from as you have with the male drivers. I mean, Jamie Chadwick, you know, well known for her open wheel exploits. And I believe it's an IBM commercial that she's in. I could be wrong there. Um, doesn't say much <laughs> for whatever brand did it if I am wrong. But nonetheless, you know, you've got you've got women from off road. You've got women from formula car racing. You've got women from touring cars and rally and on and on. It it again, it really is that all star lineup. It's also going to be super cool to see that teams play which driver is doing which lap uh, close to the vest. They don't share that until they get on the line. So that's also going to be super interesting in terms of strategy and who do you want to lead off and who do you want to finish the same way you do in an endurance race. It's just that we're, you know, keeping that to this sprint format. So it's going to be, there are a lot of exciting wrinkles to this and there are a lot of things that, Frankly, nobody has the uh, wherewithal, I think, really to pull off elsewhere in, you know, in motorsports. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun over the over the course of the season. And I can't wait to see who ends up taking the uh, championship when this whole deal is done in Argentina in December. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I think it's a crapshoot at this point. But, uh, you know, we've only got uh, about three minutes left, Chris. And I know we did have a Formula One race. Uh, I truthfully didn't get a chance to uh, watch it. I kind of caught some of the recaps, uh, uh, you know, basically, you know, on Racer.com and Formula One's website. But uh, Lewis Hamilton walking away with top honors, but it wasn't a walk in the park. Give us uh, give us a lowdown on uh, what you thought of the first round of Formula One 2021. Well, let's put it this way, Jim. If you're not one of those people who focuses more on Formula 1.5, which is kind of an inside joke that, I mean, the the internet has kind of put together, hey, let's do, let's do a fake championship for all the teams that basically aren't McLaren and Red Bull, uh, or Mercedes and Red Bull. Wow, I'm dating myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think the most compelling modern Formula 1 seasons tend to be the ones where the best driver is not the one in the best car. And that is what we saw in Bahrain. Mercedes may not have the best car anymore because Honda, apparently, as they've got one foot out the door, has built a miraculous power unit for Red Bull. Max Verstappen wins the pole for the race and leads a significant amount of the race. And really what this event seemed to come down to, to me, 
was neither driver was on their A game or neither team was on their A game. There were mistakes in both pits that both of those teams are probably hanging their heads over. And what it came down to was who was going to make the last mistake because that would decide the race. And that turned out to be Max Verstappen making the pass on Lewis Hamilton, but running wide and having to give it back. And then it seemed like he burned up his tires just a little bit, trying to catch back up and eventually fell out of DRS range, couldn't make the pass. So, you know, game on for this year, man. It's, I don't, you know, Lewis Hamilton proved why he is deserving of every accolade thrown his way that he was able to pull that race off. Um, and I'm sure that the two cars are closer than you think. Um, but at the same time, that was no given. That was no given. I think Max Verstappen has the best chance he's ever had to bring the fight to Lewis Hamilton and take a world championship out of Mercedes' hands and put it back into Red Bulls for, I think, the first time since the Sebastian Vettel days. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this year shapes up. Unfortunately, like Supercross, like you mentioned, we've got kind of a multi-week gap going on here, which was a bummer. I was so used to the every week thing last year with F1. It made it so much easier to follow. <laughs> I was pumped on it, but whatever. We'll be racing into December again anyway with them. So it's cool. Yeah. I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, we got Italy, I think April 16th through the 18th. But uh, with that, Chris, we're going to take a short commercial break. We'll be back here with more on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. From the 2018 Master Distillers of the Year comes a bold new American whiskey in a fistful of bourbon. Their whiskeys have been award-winning for generations. Now they're going all in on bourbon, blending five straight whiskeys to create a big balanced bourbon that stands apart from everything else. So grab yourself a fistful of bourbon, a blend of five bourbons created with over 100 years of whiskey blending experience. It ain't just a bourbon, it's a damn fistful. Please enjoy responsibly. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Well, welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to be tapping out on hour number one, which means that's hour number two coming at you. Hour number two, we're going to have my good friend Sean Brennan with Supercross. Yeah, he's going to be giving us the lowdown on everybody's favorite motorcycle racing series. And in addition to that, we are going to have uh, my good friend with Fistful of Bourbon, Fistful of Terry. He is going to be on Anthony Bollinger talking booze, talking whiskey, talking Fistful of Bourbon, and this new $100,000 search for the Fist contest. Yes, I'm excited. It's going to be awesome. And if you've got a fist, you should be entered in this contest. $100,000. Who would have thought, man? It's just for your fist. Picture of it. Yeah, 100 k I'll be the spokes fist. Um, I'm actually exempt from that, but uh, I would love to do that. Anyways, Anthony Bollinger, he's always fun to come on the show. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have him locked and loaded here as well. So, yes, tapping out on hour number one. Hour number two coming up. If you got any questions for any of our guests, hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on the little social media machine. And, uh, yes, we will uh, we will get that uh, all locked and loaded here. Uh, just kind of going down. I, I was, you know, in between – um, in between uh, segments, I always like to pull up some of the news and see what's going on in the world and things like that, you know, and it's just funny because motorsports news right now, our girl, Sarah Price, she is all over it right now. Racer right on the front page, Sarah Price, extreme E like I, I, you know, this is one of my dear friends. Uh, she's been a co-host on the show before. 
Uh, her and I go way back, and uh, you know, it's just funny to see. Not funny. I, I think it's amazing that she has absolutely been put on the world stage. I don't know anybody that deserves it more than her. Girl's hustled. She's worked her ass off, and uh, just to pull up all these random motorsports websites all over the globe, and Sarah Price is there front and center. I mean, it's uh, pretty remarkable, and she deserves every bit of uh, of what she's got coming to her. Man, this girl works hard. She works double time, triple time, and uh, man, really, really fortunate. Uh, you know, to have Sarah as a friend, uh, have her as part of the Down and Dirty Radio Show family, and uh, really, really excited to see what she's doing and what she's accomplished in her career. And I got to tell you, this Extreme E stuff, this girl, uh, she might be a champ at the end of this year. I think uh, the world is going to be put on notice because she is going to drop the gauntlet and throw down the hammer and bring it. But uh, yes, we'll talk more about that in hour number two because that's coming up next right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome to hour number two of the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Welcome to everybody tuning in in Sirius XM, Sports Byline, U.S. American Forces Network, or just about wherever you listen to the show. And uh, just slide it right in. Uh, head over to Apple Podcasts, hit the subscribe button to the show, and uh, support us. I'm at JimBeaver15 on social media. Now that the formalities are out of the way, we're going to get on with hour number two, which means we got my good friend Sean Brennan from Supercross. He's going to be on the show. And we've also got, yes, also got um, – my good friend Fistful of Terry with Fistful of Bourbon on the show as well. So lots of good stuff, lots of good content, and uh, yeah, a whole lot more. I was just checking uh, checking out my uh, my cryptocurrency during the break. I don't know, are, I, actually, hit me up. Are you any of you guys cryptocurrency owners? Bitcoin, Stellar Lumens, uh, Litecoin, anything? Um, let, let me know. Ethereum? I've got quite a bit of crypto at this point. It's doing well for me. Man, things are on an upswing right now, like big time upswing. Like it's, uh, man, I'm actually making a little bit of money at this deal. But uh, as with anything crypto, you never know when the bottom is going to fall out of it. But um, yeah. And then uh, what? We got opening day with baseball happening or that was yesterday and today. Um Today there's some new, uh, you know, more games, and I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy. World's getting put back together, and I absolutely freaking love it. 
Um, but uh, yes, all that being said, uh, we do got a couple of guests. Before we jump into those, though, here in hour number two, I do want to remind you, our good friends, the show in hour number two is being brought to you by our sponsors at Manscaped. And uh, they're the global leaders in men's below the waist grooming. And we got a special offer for you. You get 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. Once again, 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. It's spring cleaning. And you know what? Yeah downstairs it's gonna thank you later um with that being said though uh manscaped a good partner in the show fun partner to have uh yes you got a lot of amazing partners and we're gonna get into talking uh, a lot more about uh those and a whole lot more here on the show but uh, it is uh, hour number two and we're gonna take a short break to kick things off and then when we come back man all killer no filler sean brennan fistful of terry right here on the general tire down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor i'm polaris rider jim beaver i race trophy trucks professionally host a down and dirty radio show and also travel the country announcing motorsports events i've seen it all and trust me i've done most of it so when it comes time to relax on the weekend nothing is better than taking time with my family in our razor vehicles they've got the reliability i need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain if you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com. Or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. From the 2018 Master Distillers of the Year comes a bold new American whiskey and fistful of bourbon. Their whiskeys have been award-winning for generations. Now they're going all in on bourbon, blending five straight whiskeys to create a big balanced bourbon that stands apart from everything else. So grab yourself a fistful of bourbon, a blend of five bourbons created with over 100 years of whiskey blending experience. It ain't just a bourbon, it's a damn fistful. Please enjoy responsibly. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount life is all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound like what you hear catch all the back episodes of the down and dirty radio show on apple podcast and be sure to rate review and subscribe Welcome back to the Gentle Tire Down to 30 Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome a good friend of mine, somebody I just uh, just got to see about a week ago, uh, but Sean Brennan with uh, with Supercross. Uh, Sean, you and I have known each other for a long time. You have placed a ton of guests onto this show. This is the first time you've ever actually been on the show, so uh, looking forward to having you on, buddy. Man, thank you so much, Jim. You are absolutely right. Uh 
we have had a lot of guests on over the years. And my goodness, we always appreciate your support. Uh, your listeners, we appreciate their support. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the inaugural appearance for me. So thank you for having me on. Well, you know, we were talking. You you invited myself out to uh, to Super Tuesday there in Arlington, Texas, and I I kind of you you I've always got an open door with you guys, and I know this, but I I went you know normally when things are in Arizona, it's easy or or SoCal things like that, but with this whole pandemic thing, you know, that's happened, and we're kind of coming out of it now, but. I went. You know what? I want to. I want to see what, how Supercross is doing things because last year we go back to last year. You were one of the first series. I mean, Supercross and NASCAR were the first two series to get back going and and figure things out. And I kind of thought I was like Super Tuesday. This is something that kind of merged out of last year. And I was like, I kind of want to go to Super Tuesday round instead of a traditional Saturday one, just to just to see how you guys are doing things different. And I got to tip the cap to you guys. You guys have done a whole lot behind the scenes to ensure that supercross is happening this year and and actually with fans man man thank you so much uh you're absolutely right you know we learned so many different things uh you know back in salt lake city you know the salt lake city seven as we affectionately (laughs) refer to them now uh but you're right nascar and supercross were the first two two motorsports and really the first two sports to actually uh, create the bubble, if you will, which is now everybody knows what a bubble is, right? Uh, Major League Baseball, the NFL, uh, basketball, uh, everybody knows what a bubble is now, but NASCAR as well as Supercross, we were the first. And then to tip our hat just a little bit, we were actually the very first sport to actually complete our season using a bubble uh, in the pandemic. So we were able to crown three champions uh, in Salt Lake City, and we're the first to do so. Uh, And, boy, we learned a lot. We learned a ton of different things on what works, uh, and we were able to really adapt them uh, for the 21 season. And a lot of the things, you know, from a fan perspective that they may not know, is that safety with the athletes is number one. You know, we still race the 17 race championship and we have to keep the athletes safe uh, and keep them healthy. If these guys, you know, when you race 17 races in a season, just like an NFL season, every race matters. Every game matters in the NFL. There isn't, you know, well, we can drop a couple regular season games here and there and still win our division kind of thing. Uh, Supercross is not like that at all. So if one of our marquee athletes, Cooper, Ken, Eli, ended up missing a race and a chance at 26 points, uh, that's devastating. And there would just be no way for them to, to be able to come back from that. So we have been testing twice a week with all of our athletes, just like other sports uh, have been doing. And that has been working. Uh, The paddock has been a combination of a bubble for all of the teams and athletes, but we've also been able to create flow and traffic flow so that fans still get a really neat fan fest um, experience and can still see what is happening in the paddock so they can still get uh, a view under the hood, if you will, and watch the mechanics working on the bikes and washing and all of those same things that they would typically get you know in a normal year you can still see a lot of those things so you know the bubble environment works we know it works and it's really been twofold for us keeping the athletes and teams safe and then now also creating a safe environment for the fans so you being at our super tuesday race in arlington i know you saw both of those Um, but everything from pod feeding to hand sanitization everywhere. Uh, One thing that, you know, a lot of fans probably don't realize that these stadiums are doing complete sanitization in between races. So that's why it's so important. And, you know, that, you know, pod seating and, you know, areas of the stadium that aren't being used stay that way because it's a huge expense to sanitize an entire stadium. Uh, So contactless shopping, a lot of these different things that, 
uh, we have instituted uh, for this season to keep the fans safe because that is equally important to us is that one, they have a great experience and yet they know that they will be safe and they can be with their family, their friends inside their pod. And no matter where they're at on, you know, which side of the fence you're on, uh, that they can trust that they can come and have a great, a great time, a great experience and see exceptional racing, which the 21 season uh, certainly is offering up. Yeah. Well, and that was kind of one of the big things like that I took in there and I've been to a ton of Supercross the last 20 years. I mean, uh, a lot of Supercross, but the fan experience and that's, you know, obviously we had our press credentials, went up to the press box, things like that. But, you know, I kind of wanted to go and and get the fans perspective. So I I walked around, I, I did everything the fans, you know, would do. And I got to tell you, Sean, you guys done a tremendous job. I think a lot of people are really leery about coming out to to events still, you know, as things are opening back up. It's like, ah, uh, you know, I, I you know, a little bit on the fence. And I got to tell you that the fan experience, you know, you guys have put in a lot of procedures and processes to protect the fans. The fan experience that you get out of Supercross, that you expect to get out of Supercross, it's still 100% there, uh, you know, and, and that's really tough to do. And, and you know, for that, I got to tip the cap to you guys at Supercross because, not many people would still be able to deliver to the fans like uh, you were doing pre-pandemic and somehow you guys have figured it out. Man, thank you for that. Uh, It is a very uh, fine line and a difficult balance uh, to do that. So, man, thank you. And I'm so glad that you were able to come out and experience uh, everything, especially on a Super Tuesday, which we may never have again. (laughs) We'll see. Definitely. Super Tuesday is uh, is definitely one for the books. We are going to uh, come back with Sean after the commercial break. But uh, before we do that, I do want to uh, remind you guys, Supercross, yes, they still have five rounds of racing left. A triple header in Atlanta. We got round 13, 14, and 15 starting April 10th. Yes, coming up very soon in Atlanta, Georgia, followed by a Super Tuesday around April 13th, followed up by another Saturday around April 17th. Triple header in Atlanta, the 10th, 13th, 17th. Tickets still available. Those being done at Atlanta Motor Speedway. So changing it up a bit, bringing a little outdoors into the indoors, and uh, it's going to be pretty awesome, actually. I'm really looking forward to those rounds. And then to wrap things up, Round 16 and 17, the 24th of April and the 1st of May, we've got races in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, those, uh, you remember those from, uh, you know, last year in June, they ran those rounds to wrap up the Supercross season back in Salt Lake City for round 16 and 17. And uh, tickets available for both of those as well. All the info information go to supercrosslive.com hit the schedule and tickets button and uh, you can go get into uh get into some supercross action and trust me whether you go to super tuesday or one of the saturday rounds it is definitely worth the price of admission doing a great job over there at supercross and we're going to talk more about that and the rest of the season when sean brennan returns here to the show right here on the general tire down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network.
Well, welcome back here to the Gentle Tired on a Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, Jim Beaver here, and we've got my good friend with Supercross, Mr. Sean Brennan, on the show. This is segment number two with Sean. Sean, I know uh, before we went to the break, you and I were talking about, uh, you know, Supercross, working with the fans, uh, Texas, uh, you know, and and a whole lot more. Well, you know, jump right into things, though, but you guys were throwing a bit of a curve. I don't want to say a curveball, but right before Supercross was supposed to be there in Arlington, uh, Texas went full open, wide open, basically pandemic stopped in Texas. Texas, man, that had to been uh, that had to been a, a big one to drop right on Supercross's lap. Uh, you know, right before uh, you guys were actually slated to race there with this triple header. When the governor of Texas announced, and it was about a week prior uh, to our first race in Arlington, that you know he was lifting the mask mandate, lifting everything. Uh, I started getting text messages, you know, from our media. Oh my, this is great. You know, are you guys going to go to a hundred percent capacity and are you totally opening up? This is fantastic. And as you noticed, no, the answer to that was no, we didn't. Um, there are still a lot of folks, like you say, that are leery of going to live events. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of folks that are totally fine with it and have been fine with it. Uh, all along but even stadiums at this point uh, are still figuring things out so you know AT&T Stadium did not want to go to full capacity Uh, we were committed already to our plan and our season plan and going into Arlington we're at a 15 percent capacity for both FanFest as well as uh, inside stadium capacity. And, you know, for fans that are still a little bit leery and want to bring their family, we certainly didn't want them uh, to to not trust what we've already communicated with our fan wellness plan. Um, so it's definitely a balance. Would we like to be selling more tickets? 100%. We are a live ticket uh event company first and foremost yes supercross we do produce a television show that is live uh fan fest is an entire uh, different operation uh and there's so many different things that we do when you uh look at a supercross race and a supercross event but at the end of it you know felt entertainment we sell tickets so there is a huge difference between 15% capacity at a stadium like AT&T Stadium where they're around 82,000 uh, and then being able to sell that out or at least have the potential to sell out. You know, when we were there in 2020, we had 62,500 fans at that, at that race. And that was actually a record number for us uh, in the last couple of years. So, you know, big... Thank you to Texas fans. We have a rich history of racing in Texas. Uh, That stadium is exceptional. That is a world-class stadium. So fans, uh, as as well as us, the athletes, teams, everybody loves going to Arlington. Everybody loves going to and racing in AT&T Stadium. Um, But again, a week prior you know, just was not uh, enough time, and we we're already committed to our plan and our mitigation plan. And we still have to go to two other states. So we still need to go to Georgia, and we still need to go to Utah. So it would have been a disservice to all of our athletes and teams to be lax in Texas and then try and tighten everything back up for the final two states that are not as open as Texas is. Um, You know, just another little logistics thing is that, you know, it, it takes easily six to eight weeks to what we call scaling a stadium. And that's really, you know, dividing the stadium up all of the different seats and the different pricing structures that are in those seats that's easily a six to eight week process when you figure that you now have to take that same process and apply it to pod seating and grouping 
two, four, six, eight, and ten in a stadium, that just lengthens that process. So it is definitely not enough time in a week or even two weeks or even four weeks to descale a a stadium, if you will, uh, to break up all of those pods. So even from just a basic logistics standpoint, even if we wanted to increase our you know ticket capacity to 50, 60, 70, or 80, logistically, there just was not enough time to <laughs> to even be able to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, all this is going on, obviously, and I know, you know, we've got Super Tuesday rounds. We've got these uh, triple headers happening, and, and we got to talk. we got five rounds left in Supercross, Sean. we got a, a hell of a shootout happening between uh, Co- Cooper Webb and Ken Roxon, but uh, we're, we're headed to a triple header in Georgia, which is going to be interesting in its own right because this is going to be kind of uh, – this is at uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway, so it's going to be kind of uh, – uh, I call it one of those bridge the gap rounds where it's like a, a mix of outdoors and indoors, you know, like you have at Daytona every yep. year. Well, now we've got it at Atlanta, which gives a little bit different vibe with the track. There's a triple header there. Then we move into two rounds at Salt Lake. We've got these battles going on in both the 250s and the 450s, man. We're, this is going to be an exciting month, month and a half ahead of us, buddy. It really is. Uh, and to your point there, man, Atlanta Motor Speedway, we're super excited to be able to, to go there. Fans get Daytona. You know, there's one hybrid track like you're talking about. Uh, And, I mean, everybody loves going to Daytona. Those tracks are super gnarly. They're much, much longer. The lap times uh, are that much greater. The fitness level that the athletes need to be at to even just race Daytona, especially in, you know, in the heat and humidity, uh, depending on when we're there, adds to obviously the racing so now to be able to do three of those types of races in an eight-day span that's going to be very very taxing on our athletes for sure uh but just you know the dirt the different type of dirt uh in atlanta that we're going to have up there the additional lap times who knows what the weather is going to bring uh, and typically, well, not typically, I mean, we have always raced indoors in Atlanta. So that has always been a stop that we haven't really had to worry about the weather. Uh, but man, going there in the middle of April, who there's no telling what the weather might be. So that's going to be a completely different factor uh, for the Atlanta rounds. Uh, and then Salt Lake City, you're absolutely right. We're going to have two unique you know, track designs for uh, for both of those races as well. Um, and it cannot be any tighter, uh, especially in the 250 classes as well. Uh, we've got a tight points race in both the Eastern Regional as well as the Western Regional. And now there's only 15 points separating Cooper Webb and Ken Roxon. And obviously Eli Tomac is not out of it yet. Uh, the Atlanta rounds are certainly going to suit uh, Mr. Tomac, and it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how those races turn out here uh, in a couple of weeks. It's going to be exciting down the stretch for sure. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that's probably the biggest thing that's got me excited is is Atlanta. And obviously, I, I you know, I love the finales and things like that, but, you know, like you'd said, we've got uh, a triple header in Atlanta, new track, new facility. Guys have never seen it before. It's going to be one of the most grueling, you know, the, they're just like you said, they're just a little bit longer. It's a little more grueling than your traditional Supercross. But then these riders are going to have to do it back to back to back all within the scale, you know, span of, uh, you know, of a week, basically. Like, you know, endurance. Yep. There's so many storylines heading into Atlanta and the rest of this. I mean, it, you know, and like you said, the tight points battles, like you couldn't write a script any better than this, Sean. No, no, you really couldn't. And it and it seems like, you know, I, I mean, I've been doing this for six years now. And every year going into the season, we seem to say this is the, you know, the deepest field that we've ever had. And it has been true for the last five and six years. And then just about every season has come down to the final race. And, you know, that's what you want. That's what the fans want. That's what we want. That's what makes this so exciting. Uh, But it is going to come down to, I think, you know, we may end up seeing 
Uh, well, who knows what we'll see after Atlanta, but I definitely think that, you know, all three of those championships are going to be decided in Salt Lake City, uh, and it's going to be it's going to be exciting. But you're right. The storylines uh, abound, and it's going to be fun, uh, these final few few races for sure. Well, Sean, it is always a pleasure catching up, buddy. Uh, you know, appreciate you taking the time to call into the show. Thank you for the hospitality in Texas. I know I'm I'm looking at uh, these three rounds in Atlanta and the two in Salt Lake. Going all right. So uh, where where am I hitching? Uh, where am I getting plane tickets to? Because I, I think I've I don't know. The storyline's got you know. The, I got to scratch that itch and I got to get out to another round before this thing wraps up. I think, buddy. I, I think you need to. I know that you are super busy. You've got a lot going on, but we've got one more Super Tuesday. Uh, but, man, you are welcome at any of these rounds. It would be great to have you, and uh, you are always welcome at Supercross. You know that, Jim. Always awesome having my boy Sean Brennan on the show. Uh, great guy, great personality. He does a ton for the you know the sport of Supercross. And, uh, you know, he's always uh, – I, I dig him on Instagram because I always post him behind-the-scenes rad stuff from Supercross and, and things like that. But uh, like I said before, tickets left for uh, the triple header in Atlanta, Atlanta Motor Speedway, as well as uh, the two rounds to cap things off in Salt Lake City. Supercrosslive.com is a website. Go and get those tickets. Get lock-loaded. Go and check out some of the best – racing action you can find anywhere um yeah and uh, you know don't forget we've got uh, an amazing amazing supporter of the show the show being brought to you by our good friends at manscaped yes you can trim your holes safely and efficiently i'm talking about manscaped the global leaders in blends below the waist grooming and they do have a special exclusive offer just for our audience use the code jim beaver get 20 percent off plus free shipping at manscaped Dot com. There's 2 million men who trust Manscaped. And uh, you know what? They're here to make sure you are trimmed and smelling nice. After all, it's time for some spring, spring cleaning. Don't forget, 20% off and free shipping with the code Jim Beaver at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using the code Jim Beaver. And uh, yes, we're going to take a short break. We come back. My good friend, Anthony Bollinger, a.k.a. Fistful of Terry. He's going to be on the show talking some fistful of bourbon and uh, looking for a spokes fist here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to uh, the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, along with our good friends at Fistful of Bourbon. Speaking of Fistful of Bourbon, I got my buddy Fistful of Terry, Anthony Bollinger, on the line. Buddy, it's been uh, it's been a few months since we've had you on. I know uh, we're probably going to have you on a little bit more regular, at least for the next month, because... Uh, you guys are pulling out the, all, all the stops at Fistful of Bourbon, and uh, we are looking for a spokes fist, my friend. That's right, man. Happy to be back. It feels like it's been a few years. But, um, yeah, man, we are. Fistful of Bourbon is in the search uh, for the $100,000 fist. This is not a gag. This is not an April Fool's joke. We are literally looking for a spokes fist for the brand, and we're paying hundred grand for the gig. And hundred grand for a fist – uh, that's some, that's some pretty good, that's some pretty good money. I know I posted it up on social. And I immediately had a bunch of DMS from my friends. Am I exempt? Cause I'm friends with you. I'm like, no, apply, 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 you know? So, uh, I, and some of these fists, I, like, I know these guys and I'm like, yeah, I, I could see it. You know, it's, 
I think that's what's going to be funny about this is this thing goes on. I know you said you got a handful of them, you know, applicants already, but just to see the different various fists that we get, you know, submitted into this contest, that's what's got me excited, man. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I mean, there's some things I do for a hundred grand, and one of the easier side is to take a picture of my fist and give a little interview and and, and try to be a spokesman. But um, yeah, I, I'm super excited, and um, I've been kind of overseeing some of the applicants as they as they kind of come in, and uh, there's some there's some great fists out there. I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, and I think that'll probably we we'd talk maybe next week. We'll we'll kind of do like a weekly update. We'll talk about some of the funny ones that you've had, you know, we've had apply and and things like that because. Uh, I, I got to think, like, I'm looking at, like, movies like Revenge of the Nerds, and then I'm looking at, like, you know, cowboys and bikers, and I'm like, man, this is going to be an eclectic mix of all kinds of different fits. Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting for the uh, David Duchovny from Zoolander where he had that fist and that glass little canister <laughs> on his arm. He was an old hand model. If someone can grab that, uh, I don't know, man. It's got a place in my heart. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it, I I wonder too. Like he goes, and this this bridges the gap with a lot of uh, uh, brands under the umbrella, you know, William Grant umbrella. But you know, Sailor Jerry. I'm like, we we gonna get somebody with like a you know pirate style with a hook or something like that apply? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something, man. I mean, we're, we're open to all fits for this competition. So uh, that, that's one of the, uh, the the good thing about this job is seeing the creativity of people, and uh, I'm very excited to see what uh, comes through the inbox. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but let's circle back because Fistful of Bourbon, I know, obviously, you know, we had you on, uh, I think it was towards the tail end of last year. And, and obviously we've got, uh, we've got a great relationship. We do a lot with the brand, but uh, let's talk about the brand in general, because you're a brand ambassador for Fistful of Bourbon. I know uh, everybody I've talked to, and I know, you know, I've been lucky enough that uh, you guys send me out whiskey and I've shared it with a lot of friends. I've given some bottles out. Um, man, everybody loves this stuff. I mean, in the marketplace, I know there's a local liquor store. He can't keep it on the shelves. Uh, once people try it, it kind of gets its fists into them, no pun intended. But, uh, um, <laughs> you know, this is uh, this is good stuff. How's everything going with the brand, man? Because uh, it seems like, you know, social media is cranking. I mean, people are loving what they're tasting. It seems like, you know, all systems go. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely um, – a weird time to launch a new brand like people who aren't aware we launched this nationally uh, nationally back in september and you know first time ever i think in our history of launching a brand during a pandemic so you can't get liquor to lips you can't taste in person you know how do you how do you get the word out how do you get people uh, safely and socially distancing trying your product and uh, it's working out so far because i think at the end of the day you know we basically wanted to create an approachable whiskey or approachable bourbon that we could sell for a value um, and that's kind of when we hit the nail on the head, you know, fistful of bourbon. It's a blend of five straight bourbon whiskeys, um, 90 proof hits right in that wheelhouse of that full body flavor, that maple, caramel, cinnamon, all those lovely oak flavors for just a really nice approachable whiskey. Easy to drink with a beer, holds up in a cocktail. Um, and like you said, everyone I taste it, loves it. And then we tell them the price, they really love it. So um, we kind of hit the nail on the head and I'm super excited you know, to watch this grow. Yeah, and that's one of those. I think you do a blind taste test with Fistful of Bourbon and ask them, you know, pick the price point. It's going to come in double of what, uh, you know, double of what they expect. Then you tell them the real price. They're like, really? Sign me up. You know, and I think that's that's why locally they haven't been able to keep it on the shelves, you know, because everybody's expecting it to come in at that really premium price tag, and it just doesn't, you know. But it, it's it's worth that premium price tag. You guys just, uh, you found the sweet spot. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it for a few reasons. You know, I mean, William Grant and Sons, that's our – parent company, family-owned distillery out of Scotland. You know, we've been producing, blending um, scotch and spirits for over 130 years. So the amount of, you know, lineage and, 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 and workforce behind this over 100 years of blending um, history into this, you know, $23, depending where you are in the country, you know, inexpensive bottle, um, it's definitely worth it. Also, when you talk about the, the price, I talk about the flavor, and it's a straight bourbon, you know, so it's minimum age two years. When people taste it, they don't. They taste it blindly. They don't realize it's such a young whiskey, and that's due to the blend. You know, Kelsey McKickney, our, our master blender out of Scotland, you know, she layered these five different barrels to give it this kind of more mature, more you know, bigger, bolder flavor by, while utilizing a young whiskey. It's kind of how we can uh, get it to you guys at a value. 
Yeah, well, I and I don't know if you were behind this, but uh, you guys post up once in a while some recipes, things like that on on your Facebook, and so I caught one, uh, caught one a couple. Uh, it was probably a month or so back, and we actually tried this, and I got to tell you. Uh, you guys called it, uh, I believe, the Gold Rush, um, but it's uh, two parts yeah, fistful man. of bourbon, some lemon juice, and some honey syrup. I got to tell you, man, that delivers. It looked, it looked amazing in the picture, and I got to tell you, trying that in person, oh man, is that the hot ticket? Yeah, as, as the ambassador, one of my um, job duties are to create recipes. Um, obviously, I didn't create the actual recipe of the Gold Rush. That's a modern classic um, by this bar out in. Um, out of New York um, a few years ago, but um, you know I co-signed on the recipes. So we throw them up on the up on, uh, up on the website, so we want to make sure we're giving everyone the best recipes and the best products. But uh, yeah, for anyone who likes a whiskey sour, a gold rust is just a lovely little lovely variation. Um, kind of just a more you know buttery mouthfeel, you know honey, lemon, and uh, full-bodied whiskey. Super easy, and it's uh, an amazing spring cocktail as well. So I went on to uh, the website, uh, you know, and uh, was looking at how you applied to be the, the spokes fist. And uh, you put out a hilarious <laughs> video, you know, in line with everything that Fistful does. And I, it's one of my favorite things about the brand is you don't take yourselves too serious, but you do take the whiskey pretty serious. Um, but, yep. you know, <laughs> you had mentioned something about why you don't apply personally to be the spokes fist. And, uh, you know, it, whoever the winner is, you'll disclose it to him. I started laughing. I'm like, so you going to give me any hints to why you can't apply? Because uh, <laughs> there's got to be a story there. So one of those, if I tell you, I got to kill you type of things or what? 100%. First of all, what do you think of the cowboy suit, man? The bolo yeah, you and the, the, uh, the collar sticks? Yeah, you were looking sharp. I could see that on a daily basis. You just wearing that into, into bars regularly, right? Yeah. Full disclosure, man. I filmed that in my living room, man, with the green screen because, you know, I'm not, I'm not about to leave right now. So uh, that was a bummer. But, uh, yeah, listen, man, due to legalities, I can't talk about why uh, I can't put my fist in the running. But, uh, like, if you watch the video on our website, spokesfist.com, and you win this 100 grand, you win this gig, I'll literally tell you why I cannot run for this position. <laughs> it's a good story, though. I bet it's a good story. You know, I, I'm looking at this deal going, you know, uh, man, fists, model fists. I mean, yeah, that's that's another level. That's some bragging rights on social media, right? My fist looks so damn good that they're going to pay me a hundred grand for it. Like, I don't know, man. That's like if if there was an OnlyFans for fists or something like that, I think that somebody ought to set that up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to start accepting those applications of anything nasty out there, guys. So, uh, just your fist over the bottle will do fine. Uh, I don't need uh, having nightmares. But um, yeah, they say uh, you got a face for radio or too ugly for Hollywood. We'll take your fist and uh, we will promote that and make it our icon. So, you know, super excited um, about this uh, campaign. Yeah. So, uh, campaign opens up today. Um, you know, hundred thousand dollars on the line. People can go to the website. They can apply, upload. Uh, you know, all their information. How long is this running, man? So we opened it today. So and the applications would go until um, April thirteenth, and we stop the applications there. And then after April thirteenth, first week, we bring it down to narrow it down to the top five. And then um, by April thirtieth, we will announce the winner. And, um, and it's game on from there. But um, there should be some fun little things in between April 13th and the 30th of, um, you know, maybe some crowdsourcing, uh, some uh, honorable mentions, you know, hairiest knuckles, dirtiest fingernails, whatever is out there. We're going to uh, we're going to try to promote everybody who entered this. But um, I, I'd like to tell everybody just quickly how to apply just in case, you know, they're wondering um, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Everybody's got a fist and there's a yeah. hundred grand on the line. Why not? I mean, listen, man, a hundred grand for, for just a spokes fist. This is amazing. But um, yeah, anyone who's interested in this, you know, it's open to anyone who's legally allowed to work in the United States uh, has to be at least 25 years old. You go to spokesfist.com. There you'll see a lovely video of yours truly kind of giving you the one-on-one -on -one how to apply. But basically what you got to do is you upload a, a photo of your fist from the front of the fist to the top and from both sides, then upload just a nice little uh, 10, 20 second video of you explaining, you know, a, a kind of a creative and enthusiastic video of yourself with your fist. And then just a quick paragraph under 300 words, why you think your fist deserves to be the spokes fist of Fistful of Bourbon. And it's easy as that. And you're in the running for a hundred grand and uh, 
possibly uh, hanging out with me in the future. Yeah, well, you and I need to hang out at some point in the future, I think. I don't know, one of my East Coast trips or something. We got we got to get together and go have drinks some night because I think uh, uh, it's either going to end really good or really bad, but uh, either way it's going to be epic, I'm sure, man. 100%, man. And we maybe by, by the time we pick this uh, spoke, this, we'll bring them out too and uh, parade them around. Uh, that, that, that could definitely be a good time. Yeah, people, I mean, you, you tuning in, what do, you, what do you got to lose? Like literally a month from now, you could be sitting on $100,000 because uh, you got a damn good looking fist. I mean, uh, count me in on that if I was, uh, wasn't exempt from it. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to uh, gonna be a fun month. And uh, I can't wait to see the videos and the pictures and the various fists that we have show up because uh, I think that's going to be the most exciting part of this whole deal. Yeah, man, right on. I mean, listen, I've been in the beverage industry for over a decade. And I've never seen a uh, spokesman's competition out there. And this is not including anyone. This is for everybody, man. You could be a bartender, a barback, a ranch hand, uh, a school teacher. It does not matter what you do. You could be unemployed. Obviously, it's been a rough time this past year and a half for yeah. a lot of people. This might be a way out for some folks to see a, you know, a better future. So everybody get in on this. Awesome, man. Well, Fistful of Terry, it is always fun having you on the show, buddy. We'll definitely do it again next week. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll have some fist, uh, fist pictures to look at and, uh, and uh, you know, talk about <laughs> next week. Yeah, man, right on. We'll definitely be posting some stuff soon. So thank you guys very much. Well, Fistful of Terry, uh, he never disappoints. Always fun having him on the show, catching up. And I got to tell you, this is uh, it's pretty legit, man. Fistful of bourbon. Hundred thousand dollars searching for a spokes fist. Yes, a spokes fist. If your fist looks rowdy, if it looks awesome, you could take home a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. I mean, that's uh, it's pretty insane, right? Um, I, I gotta love them. And if you haven't tried Fistful of Bourbon yet, it's just some damn good bourbon. I'm a whiskey drinker and I love it. Price point is on point as well. So check it out. Thanks, Fistful of Terry. We are going to uh, come back after this break. And you know what's going to happen? Yeah, it's kind of getting towards the end of the show. But uh, I don't know. We may have just a hair left in the tank to bring us home across the finish line. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do that when we return right here to your favorite motorsports show, the Down and Dirty Radio Show, the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right. Yeah, we're back. And this is the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, we are here to wrap things up. Want to issue a challenge to our audience. Yes, this is year number 10 of this show If there is a guest, if there is anybody, I don't care who they are on this planet, if they are loosely related to cars, motorsports, action sports, whatever it may be, and you want to hear their voice on this show, let me know about it. Jim Beaver 15, hit me up, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I don't care how you get a hold of me, let me know because I will put a search on. I will send emails. I don't care who they are. We will try our damnedest to get them on the show this year. Challenge issued to you, the audience. Yes, let me know, and we will do our best to get them on the show. So uh, this could be fun. This could be interesting. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully you guys take me up on that. 
And uh, speaking of, uh, why don't you take me up on this too? Please go to Apple Podcasts. Hit the subscribe button. Yes, I know I say it all the time, but go and do that, please. Help us out. And, uh, yeah, you know, we got a lot of amazing partners in the show as well. General Tire, Polaris Razor, Vision Wheel, Rigid Industries, USBX TV Axles, iRacing, Dirtfish, Optimus, Fistful of bourbon. Looking for a coupon code at Dirtfish. It's Jim Beaver 15. That'll get you 15% off any and all classes at Dirtfish Rally School. Uh, also, PR dash Jim Beaver. That's going to get you uh, 50% off at iRacing. And uh, you need another one? Yeah, I'm sure you do. How about our good friends at Manscaped? 20% off plus free shipping with a code Jim Beaver at Manscaped.com. Yeah, that's 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped.com with a code Jim Beaver. So, uh, yeah, if that's not enough, uh, I don't know what is. But, uh, yes, I will be at Dirtfish next week, but we will have a show next week. Uh, looks like Antron Brown going to be one of our guests. Yeah, AB never disappoints. Always looking forward to having Mr. Brown getting down with Brown right here on the show. He might end up being a reoccurring guest here uh next couple of uh uh months because yeah he's uh, got it serious xm as a sponsor of his uh nhra top fuel car so yeah i don't know we're gonna be doing a little bit more with ab and he's a good friend of mine and he's always fun anyways so yeah ab on the show doesn't disappoint ever uh i know i'm uh, had a lot of you ask uh, i will be back behind the wheel in uh, my my off-road car uh silver state 300 in april and uh also uh, we've got uh, the Baja Nevada race, uh, middle of May, so two races back to back. Yep, I'm uh, I'm blowing the rust off. We'll go back to racing, but uh, yeah, I guess we're up against time break. So time to see it next week, right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Be safe. Have a great Easter weekend.